Hello people, this is Ivan and today we're going to learn XPath. What is an XPath? So it is a query language for finding nodes of the XML document. Uh, HTML and XML have a pretty similar tree-like structure, so XPath support built into the browsers and so XPath syntax works for both HTML and XML. We have learned about the CSS selectors in the previous video and now it's time to learn XPath. I've set up a simple HTML app that we're gonna use for the demo. Let's have a look at it. As you can see, it's pretty simple. It has just a couple of divs, couple of headers and couple of links. That's pretty much it. But that's gonna be enough for us to, to do the demo today. Uh, so let's start writing some simple XPath selectors. Let's start with finding an element by type. So if I want to find, uh, let's say, meta, here we go. Uh, if I want to find element by ID, the syntax is the wildcard, which is just give me any element. And then I can say, give me element with the ID, which is equal root. So what I'm expect to be found is this div. Okay, we see we have one of one, we found this div. So the same works for the class. I can say, give me the element with a class equals app. And I found that div. Now, let's do more complex selectors. They allow you to traverse the DOM structure up and down. You remember in CSS selector, we use the more and the space for the child and descendant. In XPath, the child means slash and descendant means double slash. So you could say, uh, find me a body and somewhere underneath the body, find me an H1. So all the kids, all the child of this node gonna be inspected and child of the child of the child of the child and so on and h1 should be found okay so this works for the descendant right you found the descendant of the body now let's find a direct child i'm gonna say let's say a header and then a child of the header that is h2 and what i'm gonna get i'm getting this uh, h2 uh, node now there is another one which is pretty interesting, which is probably not very useful in the context of the test automation, but more likely it's useful in the context of uh, data scraping. Uh, it is union. So you could find this element or that element. So you could say something like find me or H1 or find me P. So as you can see, I have found this and that. So again, in, in, in test automation, you are very unlikely going to be doing something like that. But if you're trying to gather some data from the website, that could be useful for you. Another way to do the union is not with the pipe, but with the or in the attribute. So you could say something like, give me a link that has a target, let's say, blank, or a target, uh, target equals self. And you get this or that. Another cool feature of the uh, XPath is its ability to allow you to traverse the DOM app. So you could search for, let's say, a P, right? You found this element and then you can say, well, give me the parent. Okay. And then you can say, give me the parent. So you could, find, let's say you have an element with a unique ID. You could find it underneath and then traverse up to, in, if you want to find an element that is not selectable by any other means. Now let's talk about the attribute selectors. I kind of showed them to you already, but I want to group them together. So they all uh, nice and clean structured in your head. So the syntax is you find an element and then you do the square bracket and then you say at 
and then the attribute equals value. So you can say, uh, give me the links with the target equals blank. And you found it. Another cool way of finding elements is you can use a function contains. So contains is like a wildcard in CSS selectors. You could say, find me all the target, all the links that have a target attribute with a value blank. And we found it. Just to be sure that it works, let's find all the with a self. Okay, it works. Another example of the function is uh, start with. So it's pretty much similar to what we had in the CSS selector with the this symbol. Um, yeah, so you can find the L. Another cool feature that XPath allows you to do is to write a arithmetic operations that it's going to look at the value. So I have this link which has a attribute with a value and I can say find me all the links which have value more than 10 and I will find it. So it's useful when you have multiple elements and, and only let's say some of them are matching. In XPath version 2 and 3, yes there are specs version 2 and 3, there are more cool features and they have like regular expression support, more arithmetic functions, type checking, some awesome stuff. Unfortunately the browsers only support XPath version 1 and there is very unlikely that they're gonna adopt the newer versions. So that is it, we learned basics of the XPath selectors. They are a little bit more flexible than CSS selectors. They allow you to traverse DOM up and down. They allow you to run some expressions and some logic inside. Uh, the possible downside of that is, in my opinion, readability and maintainability. As you can see, the XPath selectors is a little bit longer and bulky and harder to read than uh, CSS selectors. Also, the test automation solutions that heavily relies on XPath could be possibly more flaky and vulnerable for the DOM changes just because the way you're going to be selecting elements is very heavily relying on the DOM structure so if something changes it's more likely to fail but in the case of let's say CSS selectors when you rely more on the classes or IDs it is less likely to happen. So keep testability in mind. It's almost always a good idea to use something like a unique test ID to identify the element. And in this case, CSS selectors should be good enough for you to find your elements. Ultimately, it is up to you and your team to decide which selector strategy do you want to use. Do you want to go with CSS? Do you want to go with XPath? Do you want to go with Boss? It is completely up to you. There is upsides and downsides in each of them and there is no sellable solution. That's it. Let me know in the comments which selector strategy do you use and see you next time.